Happy Sunday, April the 14th, everyone. Meteorologist Hunter here at Weather on the Go. And in today's weather forecast, we are going to be looking at delightful weather for about 90% of us today, but the other 10% seeing severe weather potential will break that down in today's weather forecast. And a significant severe weather outbreak still looms, especially for Monday and Tuesday of this early week. And we'll also be looking at frost and freeze potential as a strong cold front moves through later next week. We'll break this all down for you and everything that you need to know in today's weather forecast. If you are new here to Weather on the Go, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you are notified for when we do go live and also when we do these weather forecasts daily. Also be sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below. It helps to get all of this information passed along to more and more people. Let's look at the synoptic pattern here out the door today, and you can see a ridge of high pressure is in firm control here across much of the eastern two-thirds of the country, especially with its strongest influence across the Great Plains, and this means warmer temperatures. Looking at our temperature anomalies here for your delightful Sunday here today, from the Central Plains through the Midwest into the Great Lakes region, 20 to 30 degrees above normal are our, our temperatures for mid-April standards. And look at these highs this afternoon, folks. From the Chicagoland area, a little bit of a lake breeze there, but you go west into the western suburbs. We're going to be into the middle 80s, back into Kansas City, 87 this afternoon, 90s down here near Wichita into the Dodge City region, further south, low 90s, 92 in Oklahoma City, and 94 down into the Vernon, Texas, and Wichita Falls region this afternoon. And even this evening, folks, you have any Sunday evening plans? Definitely go ahead with them because we're going to have sun splash skies, clear skies out there tonight, and we're going to see low temperatures dropping into the 50s and 60s, but this evening 70s definitely a great evening for barbecues or even just getting outdoors and outdoor activities because look at this today sun splash skies not much clouds in the sky here across the middle of the country very nice weather to go around but unfortunately the weather is not all good we have another 10 percent of us over here into the northeast in the mid-atlantic and eastern ohio valley dealing with severe weather the storm prediction center's day one outlook has an enhanced risk upgrade for portions of central and western Pennsylvania. This does include Pittsburgh up toward the State College region here and then back in towards eastern Ohio. We'll keep an eye on that because we do have a threat for some damaging winds in excess of 60 miles per hour, especially here in this red shade of color. Again, in and around the Pittsburgh and State College, Pennsylvania region. And the threat for tornadoes, again, is greatest in eastern Ohio today, northern West Virginia, and western Pennsylvania. In and around the Pittsburgh region, you're kind of in that bullseye for severe weather and tornado potential today. So let's look at the timing here. The rest of this morning, a couple clusters of shower and storms, non-severe mostly, but we could still see some smaller hail, gustier winds up there into western and central New York, maybe northeastern Pennsylvania. Again, not that big of a deal for this morning. This afternoon, we see some of those storms propagating to the east-southeast, so Boston down to Hartford there, getting north of New York City, probably seeing some scattered showers and storms. Wouldn't rule out a stronger gusty wind producer or some smaller hail producers out there, but this afternoon, mainly quiet. It's this evening. We're going to start to keep an eye on a arcing band of showers and supercell thunderstorms, the strongest of which will be over here towards Pittsburgh. Those supercells could produce a couple of brief tornadoes, so we'll have to keep an eye on that as we go into the evening hours, and then they'll start to fizzle out as we go into the late evening and early Monday morning after midnight time frame as we lose the peak instability and the atmosphere begins to stabilize during that time. Now, all attention turns back to the west. As we go into early this week on Monday, the Four Corners region, a potent trough and low pressure system will be moving into the portions there of Colorado and New Mexico on Monday. That low pressure and trough will eject into the Central Plains and Midwest on Tuesday, and this is going to be coinciding into our very warm temperature. So this is going to be uh, starting to become more unstable in this environment. So severe weather is going to be an issue here across the middle of the country. Great Plains set up here. 
As we go into Monday, the Storm Prediction Center's Day 2 outlook highlights an enhanced risk, a level 3 out of 5 across portions of western Oklahoma into northwest Texas, but a large area of a slight risk, a level 2 out of 5 from South Dakota all the way down here into west Texas, and it does have the biggest risk for large hail. Large hail events this year have been very frequent, more large hail events here with over two inch diameter hailstones from Nebraska, Kansas, all the way down into western and central Oklahoma into northwestern Texas and the eastern Texas panhandle there on Monday. The tornado threat is there as well. There is a 5% shading. Honestly, would not be surprised if they did add a 10% shading for tornadoes as we get closer to Monday down here into southern portions of Kansas, northwestern and western portions of Oklahoma and perhaps far northeastern te northwestern Texas there. Definitely keep Keeping an eye on that for Monday. Looking at the setup, very sharp dry line, folks. Look at that. Dew points below zero into eastern Colorado, but ahead of that, 60 degree dew points all the way up there into Nebraska and Kansas. That's going to provide that lift and those lifting air parcels. You can see with the instability over 2,000 to 3,000 joules per kilogram, we're going to lift those air parcels up and create some thunderstorms. And looking at the mid-level jet here, very respectable on the base of this trough here in the 500 millibar layer. The 850 millibar layer low-level jet is cranking as well around 50 to 60 knots. So that will organize these storms and help to rotate these storms on Monday. So Monday morning, starting off very quiet here, Monday morning, Monday afternoon. While we can't rule out a shower or a storm here in this environment, I do think most of the afternoon hours do appear to be dry on Monday. And the reason for that is there's actually going to be a very robust capping inversion. Just think of it this way. As you have a pot of boiling water and you put a lid on it, the steam doesn't come out of the pot of boiling water, right? As you lift that lid that steam that's with the boiling water starts to come out, right? That's what this capping inversion is like. We have the lid on the atmosphere. You have warm surface temperatures. You have a warm, shallow layer aloft here, and that's preventing our thunderstorms from developing and also becoming very severe for most of the day on Monday. We'll see if we can break that cap as we go into Monday evening. If we do, we need to watch out for some supercell thunderstorms. They will be discrete, and those discrete storms could lead to some tornadic producers that could produce a strong tornado perhaps and also some very large hailstones over two inches in diameter there. Going into early Tuesday morning, overnight setup. I think we have to watch out for the potential for overnight nocturnal tornadoes, large to very large hail and damaging winds even after midnight there into Tuesday morning as these storms press up toward the Midwest and into the mid-Missouri Valley, but also the Eastern Plains, keeping an eye on that early Tuesday morning. And Tuesday setup. I am starting to believe that Tuesday is a better threat for severe weather than Monday um, for a lot of reasons, and we'll show you that here in a minute, but there is an enhanced risk of severe weather on Tuesday across much of Iowa there, central and southern, southeastern Iowa, getting into northern and northeast Missouri, and far, far western Illinois. Another large slight risk from northeast and east Texas, all the way up into southern Wisconsin and Iowa, northern Illinois as we go into Tuesday. Threat here, significant to severe weather across Iowa into Missouri and western Illinois as we go into Tuesday. Again, would not be surprised if this started to stretch a little bit further to the east with that significant threat with what I'm seeing here for Tuesday. Because we are seeing that dry line and cold front starting to catch up here across the Midwest, dew points, 50s and 60s ahead of that cold front and dry line. Instability not as robust on Tuesday, but still around 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram. Kilogram, plenty of instability for this time of year. Stronger wind shear here. The mid-level jet not as strong there on Tuesday, but the low-level jet is even stronger Tuesday than it is on Monday. So that's one of the ingredients of why I think Tuesday may be a little bit more of a robust threat for severe weather because the low-level jet is actually going to be cranking around 60 to 70 knots out here on Tuesday. And also because the capping inversion really won't be an issue as we go into Tuesday as well. We're going to have that lid off of that pot of boiling water, so to speak. So we're going to actually be able to see those surface-based thunderstorms come to fruition. So as we go through Tuesday morning, ongoing thunderstorms at the start of the period here, Western Iowa, Des Moines on west toward Omaha, and then down toward Kansas City, St. Joseph, Missouri. We'll keep an eye on that. Those would mainly be large hail producers. As we go into peak daytime heating, we're going to see an arcing band of showers and storms along a warm front move across portions of eastern Iowa into the Illinois Valley there. We're watching out for all three hazards, damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. 
But then I think Tuesday evening, why we have that enhanced risk back into Iowa, Missouri, and Western Illinois, we're going to have some clearing potentially out ahead of those storms after the morning round of storms. And that will provide the threat for more supercells to develop Tuesday evening around the dinner time frame. Those will propagate into North Central Illinois overnight Tuesday and into Wednesday morning before fizzling out across the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley on Wednesday morning. Speaking of Wednesday, we got snow up here into portions there of southern Canada. Yes, it's still mid-April, and yes, we're still seeing snow, not in the U.S. mainly, except for the Rockies, but still up here into southern Canada. We are watching a severe weather setup, though, across the Ohio River Valley on Wednesday. The Storm Prediction Center highlighting a slight risk for southern Indiana there into central and western Kentucky and northern portions there of Tennessee. We'll keep an eye on that as we do get closer. Thursday, cold front starts to drop south here, a reinforcing shot of cooler air as we go through the Midwest. Really not looking at much of a severe risk on Thursday or Friday but we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Overall, rainfall totals through next Friday on the 19th of April. Decent rainfall totals, beneficial rains across the north here. We're definitely going to be seeing a couple of inches for portions of Nebraska, the eastern Dakotas, into much of Minnesota, most of the state of Iowa getting into most of Wisconsin. So a lot of areas here in the upper Midwest that are dry will have some relief from some of that drought out there with some heavier rain on the way. And with that stronger cold front, the middle of next week, you can see the colder anomalies up here to Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, Canada, and even the northern Rockies up there towards Montana and Wyoming. That will be sliding to the south and east as we go through later next week by Friday, and you can see that cold frontal setup later next week into early next weekend down across the Red River Valley there. We'll have to keep an eye on severe weather by next Saturday, a week from yesterday, because of the threat of some instability building across the Texas Hill Country here, and we have a little bit of some help from the mid-level jet, but a little bit of a displacement of the stronger flow aloft further north from the instability. So we'll have to keep an eye on this, but I, I wouldn't be surprised with a high Cape low shear environment could be seeing more of those squall lines trying to develop with mainly a hail and damaging wind threat, very heavy rain here across these regions from Texas all the way through Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, and then stretching up through the Appalachians there as we go in towards that Saturday, the April 20th timeframe. After that, as we go into next weekend, Saturday the 20th, Sunday the 21st, yes, we're going to see colder anomalies push further to the south. It's not going to feel like April, folks. It's going to feel maybe more like uh, you know early to mid-March across some of these areas, and that will lead to the potential for frost and freeze conditions between Friday the 19th, but more so Saturday the 20th and Sunday the 21st here. If you're in the light blue, it's possible we see frost and freeze conditions. The medium blue up here toward the central plains, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley stretching up through New England there. That's a likely chance of frost and freeze. And then if you're in the darker blue here, it's pretty likely, it's very likely in fact, of some frost and freeze conditions across the northern high plains there, the upper Midwest stretching through the Great Lakes and interior New England as we go through next weekend time frame. So thank you guys so much for watching. Lots of weather to get through. Very busy weather pattern. It is April. It's severe weather season. Make sure to have multiple ways to receive watches and warnings starting today for tomorrow on Monday and Tuesday, a very busy three days of severe weather. A NOAA weather radio is a great way to do it. Otherwise, make sure you have radar apps downloaded on your phone so you guys stay up to date on your latest radar as we have more watches and warnings likely over the next several days. Stay safe out there, everybody, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their weekend out there.